Welcome to the docks. Quite the afternoon in Yorkshire, isn't it? My name is Braxton. I'm the Beta Team Leader here at Thornton Recovery Services. So, you'd like to join our expedition, eh? Papers? Hmm, researcher, eh? Most impressive. Creative, ambitious, intrepid. We'd be glad to have you. This is Anna, our technician. Hello. And over there, by the sails, that's Lucy, our navigator. But don't worry, there'll be plenty of time for introductions later. Now then, tell me, what do you know of the Temple of Memory? Little, eh? Well then, uh, let me bring you up to speed. For centuries, perhaps millennia, rumors have abounded regarding the Temple of Memory. These rumors speak of an advanced civilization, a culturally rich society, master architects, responsible for the construction of a vast city by the name of Nock, at the center of which stands a Cyclopean temple with unusual properties. The citizens of Nock were said to be in possession of an unsurpassed intelligence, and it is also said that prior to their inexplicable disappearance in the distant past, their most gifted scientists had conceived a way in which to imbue the temple with the sum of their experiences, in essence, their memories. These rumors, of course, have filtered down the eons through South American natives and conquerors alike, generations of whispers and exaggerated legendary. But that isn't to say the rumors lack teeth. Are you familiar with the kin of the trident? Well, the kin is a cult, responsible for a number of unethical transgressions over the last decade. They're worshippers of the great Queen Nokuth, the malign deity after which the lost city of Nock was allegedly named. Recently, it came to our attention here at Thornton that the kin had led an expedition into the Amazon in search of the lost city of Nock, and presumably the Temple of Memory. Nobody has heard hide nor hair of them in over two months. Our predecessors, Alpha Team, were drafted to recover the kin, but they too subsequently disappeared. Their last known location, Zone 57, deep in the Brazilian heart of the rainforest. The team comprises David Hunter, Canadian team leader, Olivia Davies, British navigator, and Thomas Moore, American technician. And that, my friend, is where we come in. We're to succeed where Alpha Team failed. We're to follow in their footsteps, in order to locate as many surviving members of Alpha Team and the kin as possible. To do so, we'll be relying on this. It's a GPS receiver of sorts, designed to detect and download audio logs recorded by Alpha Team members at various locations along the way. We know of at least three established checkpoints, and a confident retrieved logs will assist us in our efforts to locate both parties. Beyond Zone 57, it's hard to say precisely what we'll encounter. When you hear this sound, simply tap the green button. Test transmission testing. Our journey won't be without its risks. It isn't too late to turn back. What do you say? Excellent. I knew I could count on you. From here on in, you'll be known by the code name Smoke. No, Smoke, get some rest. We sail at dawn. Anna will show you to your cabin. If you'll follow me. Beautiful, isn't it? On a day like today, the sun riding high in the sky, the ocean is transformed into one of Mother Earth's most magnificent creations. Shiny and delicate, it's hard to believe that this watery desert can be capable of such cruelty. Please, join me below deck. It's time for tea and coffee, and perhaps a biscuit or two. Please, sit. Tea or coffee? Excellent choice. 
Prior to our arrival in Venezuela, I'd like to share a story with you. My story, if you'll indulge me. Well, as a boy, I frequently dreamt of the ocean. I grew up in a small village on the outskirts of the Forest of Boland in Lancashire, up in the northwest of England. Every day I would gaze upon the green slopes, admiring the distant moorland, lost in a reverie, looking beyond the most distant pinnacles, longing for the taste of ocean air. And soon enough I convinced my elderly parents to take me to the sea, to experience it first hand. We drove across the winding moors in the direction of Saltburn by the Sea in North Yorkshire. The North Yorkshire coast, oh, beautiful! And like the Pennsylvanian squonk, I was reduced to a puddle of tears. It was so grand, <laughs> so austere. But as the days passed me by, I realized something was missing. Something was absent there by the sea. Something steep, something green. And then the excursion came to its inevitable end. As we drove back in the direction of the Yorkshire Dales, and the vista beyond yielded to me, I saw the grand, inimitable hills of the Forest of Boland, my home. It was in those moments, dear Smoke, that my love of the great forest was consecrated. And although I could appreciate the grandeur of the craggy coastline of North Yorkshire and the vast sea beyond, I knew my destiny lay within the shade of towering trees. But I knew I had to leave Lancashire behind to find my forest, a forest filled with secrets the likes of which the tiny woods of Lancashire could never hope to conceal. And it was in a book on forgotten cults and lost civilizations I procured in Lancaster that I first read of the Temple of Memory. And I have come to believe it exists. This expedition will reveal the truth of the matter, one way or another, and you'll have plenty of time to pour over the associated literature as we cross the sea, dear Smoke. Now, drink up. We simply must take in some of that fresh ocean air. Ah, the sights and sounds of South America. Puerto Cabello, the largest port in Venezuela. Quite a picture, isn't it? Ah, this is the first checkpoint. Let's hear it. Hunter here. Reached Venezuela on a dreary, oppressive day, but we're in good spirits. The three of us are glad to be on solid ground, though I think it'll be a while before Davies can keep a meal down. She's had a rough time at sea. Moore is his usual self. Quiet, reserved, focused on the task at hand. No sign of the kin here in port, though one particularly talkative fella claims to have seen a group of strangers huddled about Pier 39 some six or seven weeks ago. I'm clutching at straws. Uh, next job is a secure transport. That's all for now. Hunter out. Hmm, not much to go on there. Any news on our transportation, Lucy? I took the liberty of arranging transport in advance, sir. Of course you did. This way. Ooh, a good-sized vehicle. Good work, Lucy. Smoke, join me in the back. I have more to share with you. Allow me to share with you what I know of our friends, the kin of the Trident. The kin was established in Whitby, a small seaside town in North Yorkshire. Their founder, Paul Charles, lived in a ramshackle country house on the outskirts of the town. The kin held their meetings there, sharing stories, pooling resources. In terms of cult members, Charles preyed on the downtrodden, 
luring people into his web with the promise of fame, fortune, and deliverance. On the twenty-second day of each month, the number twenty-two being of great significance to members of the kin, a special gathering would be held in honor of the Great Queen. The gathering was said to take place at a secret location on the moors nearby, a site dubbed The Pit. The Pit was said to be an entrance to the underworld, or other world, in which Charles believed dwelt the physical form of the centuried Nokuth. But the pit was merely a hole in the ground, and Charles knew it, for he was well aware of the rumoured city of Nock, and was obsessed with the Temple of Memory, which, if certain historical documents are accurate in their descriptions, is said to be the only tangible entrance to the realm of Nokuth on the planet. But it is also said, that one must be without fear, if he or she is to stand before the barnacled throne of Nokuth. The people of Nock, despite their great intelligence and spiritual prowess, were apparently unable to suppress their fears, and were suitably swallowed by the Dark Queen. The gatherings of the kin at the pit were merely trials, attempts to disarm fear in its many forms prepare them for their journey into the wilds of South America, in search of the temple, to submit to the memory of Nock, and to descend into the realm of Nokuth, to worship at her barnacled throne. The kin of the Trident believe that the Queen is merely waiting. What for, you ask? For the extinction of humanity, for the very end of the universe itself, for that moment in which we go out with a whimper, not a bang and yield to her, the Mother of Darkness. But why would anybody want to willingly seek her out? Well, there are those who wish to exist beyond the end of the universe. But in what state? That, Anna, is what Charles and his faithful companions wish to discover. So you see, my dear Smoke, our mission isn't quite as straightforward as a simple recovery. Yes, yes, I know what you're thinking. What if we discover the temple? Well, we would be wise not to enter. Now sit back, we've got quite the drive ahead of us. Zone 57, sir. Apparently so. This is the second checkpoint. Let's hear it. Davies here. We had some trouble reaching Zone 57. Encountered a cordon at Grid 444. Some primitive attempt at a roadblock. Moore and I investigated. Found a note, barely legible pinned to a fallen tree. It read as follows. Turn back, you won't get a second warning. Signed, The Hand of Nokuth. I don't know who or what The Hand of Nokuth is, but I fear the kin encountered resistance here, which suggests there's more truth to the rumours of the Temple of Memory than I'd previously been willing to entertain. Hunter is a little unsettled by this development, so we're keeping a vigil tonight. Davies out. Interesting. I wouldn't go that far. Should we be concerned? Just a couple of extremists, no doubt. Proceed as planned. Well, dear Smoke, if we're going to encounter resistance along the way, we should be prepared. We'll follow the example set by Davies and keep a vigil this evening. I'll take first watch. Let's set up camp. Oh, it's getting dark. Lucy, light torches along the perimeter. Aye, sir. We'll hit the trail at the crack of dawn. I have a feeling we're in for a sleepless night. Guys, 
Do you hear that? Yes. Sir? Keep it down, people. We don't want to alarm the natives, do we? What about the extremists? Just keep it down. Good morning, dear Smoke. Bad night? Yes, me too. I have to admit, I'm a little unsettled by what we heard last night. But no attempt was made to contact us, so I doubt we're in any immediate danger. That isn't entirely reassuring, sir. We should continue. There's a checkpoint ahead. Okay, let's hear it. More here. Checkpoint established. Covered a lot of ground today, though we've still to encounter any trace of the kin. Somehow, I can't help but feel we're walking into a trap. I heard whispers in the forest last night. Hunter and Davies say I've got an overactive imagination. <laughs> yeah, right. I fear what lies ahead. Concerns aside, we've reached an intersection. If we fail to return, let this log be a record of our decision to take the westernmost trail. More out. What if he's right? About what? About walking into a trap. Moore's fears are a little unsettling, yes. Though we've still no reason to believe he or the others encountered anything untoward. Besides, Lucy is armed. Armed? Just a precaution, Anna. We are perfectly safe, Anna. Forgive me if I don't take your word for it. You're forgiven. Come on, let's go. Wait, there appears to be something ahead. Yes, it looks like a structure of some kind. It's massive and very typical of a Mesoamerican pyramid. There's evidence of construction all around us. Foundations, pillars, smokestacks. I think we found ourselves a temple. The temple? Quickly, Smoke, let's hear it. Davies here. I don't know what to do. We were ambushed. Moore was pulled into the trees by something. It yelled first, almost as though it was signalling to another of its kind. Then it tore him from where he stood, pulled him apart. Hunter fled in the direction of the temple, left me alone, coated in Moore's blood. This log may be my last. It's certainly the last opportunity I'll get to establish a checkpoint. No sign of the kin, either. Wherever they are, I can't help but think they were taken, like more. I'm going to make a run for the temple. Have to find Hunter. Have to get away from these things. Davy's out. Sir? Head for the temple. If there's something out here with us, we need to... My God, what is it? Go! Now! What on earth was that? It had no face. How can that be? No face. Just a mouth. A huge, toothless hole. Whatever it was, it... It wasn't human. Look! That's... Davies? What... what happened to her face? In the name of God, what happened to her face? She looks like one of those things. What have they done to her? <coughs> Help me! 
Help me! Quick, Lucy! Take her down! My God! We must proceed. There has to be another way out of here. What? Back out there? With those things waiting for us? What other choice do we have, Lucy? Come on! There's a chamber ahead. And what a chamber it is. Lucy! Halt. Lucy? Lucy is with us now. As you will be, momentarily. Who, who are you? I speak on behalf of the Mother. No, Kuth. In the warmth of the deep forest, where the sun, it rarely shines, sits the barnacled throne of Nokuth on the Stygian River Line. Her face is but a glimpse of the mantis, her voice but a dance in the mist. Behold the great, wild visage of Nokuth on the Stygian River Line. What do you want with us, with Smoke and I? She wants for nothing, nothing at all, but you, you feeble-minded configurations of flesh and blood. Forever you yearn for that which is beyond your grasp, that which is beyond your comprehension. And so you will receive that which you desire. Your memories will be absorbed and transferred to the mother, for the end of life brings her closer to her goal, to achieve the ultimate darkness, to reign supreme over all matter. Just as she welcomed the people of Nock, the children of the kin, and the countless others who sought her presence, she will welcome you to share the darkness beyond the universe. For in the end, you are all destined to join her, from the simplest cell to the greatest star. And those creatures in the forest? Those abominations of nature? Members of the true faith, Mother will consume them last. Prepare yourself. Wait. Wait! Uh I'm sorry, Smoke. Get out if you can! Hunter here. I'm disembodied, but somehow I'm able, or have been allowed to, transmit one last time. No Kuth is but another word for darkness, or more appropriately, a means in which to describe oblivion. They call her the Mother, but she is genderless. She isn't a living creature, not in the sense we know or can comprehend. She's the absence of life, the antithesis of creation. And as I merge with her shadow, I feel she's given me the gift of communication in order to reach out to those who dare to follow me. You, who must join us in the dark, for time eternal, to worship at the feet of Nokuth, upon her barnacled throne. Hunter, out.